Oh, little baby. Oh, it's so big. Wow. Pick up the full frame now. That just shows how much time has passed. You know what else shows how much time has passed? What? My eyebrows are fully grown in. Oh, yeah. My last video, I shaved them completely off. So whoever says they don't grow back is a liar. You're a liar. Or you just had a really unfortunate experience, and I'm sorry. Hello, zombies. Uh, stop kicking me. I like that you just let me hold you, kind of, for the most part. It's just because you like to lick my ear. Go. Goodbye. Getting started is always the hardest part. See this? This is from stress picking my face. So that's a cute look that I really like to rock every once in a while. You see this? This is shame. Pure shame, but also my brand. How's the rest looking? Not great. To be fair, my underarms never look right because I put deodorant on them right after I do it so I don't stink like self-tanner. But then I wipe off the self-tanner in my armpits, you know? See? Look, Katie suggested a new kind of spray tan that I try. And I tried it and it's literally the most streaky I've ever been in my life. And now I know not to ever trust her ever again. So we won't make that mistake again. I don't wanna hear it. Please direct all fake tan complaints to Miss Katie Hodges. Thank you. Yeah, I already did my foundation. I skipped the whole part where I put it on my face because I started rambling about things that are not gonna end up in the final video, so here we are. Basically, I wanna talk to you guys today about the scariest sound I've ever heard. It is the scariest sound I've ever heard, and it's real, and it might be happening right now. I like learning about and researching a lot of different things that are completely random, not makeup related, and I've been doing a lot of research about this one thing in particular, especially since all the Black Lives Matter protests started to happen. I've been posting about this a lot on my Instagram stories, but it's evolved in a way that it feels like it warrants an entire video. So I wanted to be able to talk to you guys about it and just kind of chill and do my glam makeup. And if you guys want to see me talk about other things that I research and just learn about in the future, we can make this a series, like an ongoing thing. We can call it like glam and gossip, even though gossip means like unfounded, untrue things. And, and I would hopefully be talking about things that I can say are real, but I can't think of a better word that starts with a G to go with glam and. So as punishment for Katie misleading me with a new good fake tanner, I forced her to pick my makeup that I'll be doing today. I haven't looked at it yet, but she just sent it to me. So let's see. Oh, that's very pretty. Okay. I just thought of like a glitter explosion. Katie wanted me to do a glitter explosion because she knows me well and we will be talking about explosions in this video. Good job, Katie. You know where I'm gonna begin since I don't know where to begin. <laughs> Not all of them, just the tail. Whoa. I'm telling you, they grew back and they're a nuisance right now. No hesitation. Of course not. You got one life, just gotta go for it. I don't even know where to really begin for this because there's so much, I'm not gonna be able to cover everything. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. I encourage you always to do your own research. Don't ever just take what I say or what anyone else says as your only source of information. If you guys find more information about this, if you find another source that contradicts something that I'm saying, please feel free to share it because my goal is truly to like get the most clear picture of what's actually going on possible and I think the more we can actually have a discussion about it, the better. So I highly, highly recommend that this is not the only video you end up watching about this or the only source and place that you hear about it. Speaking of sources, there will also be links in the description on ways that you can help with the Black Lives Matter protests and movement, how you can get involved, where you can donate, petitions you can sign. And I highly encourage that even if you cannot donate any money, sign every petition you possibly can. It all does help. There is a lot to learn here. And no matter how you're affected by this, one of the most important things you can do is educate yourself as thoroughly as possible and then get as involved as possible. So there will be some links below to help you do that. If you have no clue what's going on and you have no clue what I'm talking about, don't start here. Start somewhere else. There's a lot of really wonderful black creators that are making videos trying to explain what's going on, how you can help, how to talk about these things. Read news media, read firsthand eyewitness accounts because the news media is often biased or not a complete picture. Keep in mind also that firsthand accounts are not the best source of information on their own. You basically wanna buffer your opinion with all different sides, sources, types of media, and try to piece it together from there. Listen to people who are doing more research than you. Listen to people who are trying to be fair, balanced. I know that's really hard to do nowadays on the internet because there's so much money in corporate media. And <laughs> if you follow me on Twitter, you already know I have a lot of opinions about this. We won't get into all of it here. I just wanna talk about scary, creepy sounds. I know that's why you click this video. You came for the creepy, you're gonna stay for the education. Come for the creepy, stay for the... 
this probably. It's gonna be impossible for me to do makeup and talk at the same time because I just, I can't do both. Yeah, it's gonna be wild. Let me tell you about this here sound. This all began when I started heavily researching anything that I could relating to Black Lives Matter protests, how cops were treating the protesters, how the media was reporting on the protests, etc. And I was following Twitter like a hawk and what was trending and I came across Hashtag Philly explosions. Now, if you already follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a lot of the beginning of this story. You can just zip forward if you want. And that caught my attention because I'm a Philly native. I was really nervous and curious to see how the cops were going to react to protesters in Philadelphia. I have not had good experiences with Philadelphia cops and the surrounding areas myself. And that is with all of my privilege going into it. So I can only imagine how scary it must be to deal with some Philly cops when you don't have that as a buffer. I wanna say this was like two days into the protests. It was really early. It was the very first week, that's for sure. And there were all these people under this hashtag that were saying, is anyone else hearing these crazy explosion sounds in Philly? They're constant, they're super loud, and this is gonna be important for the rest of the video. They weren't seeing fireworks and they were not hearing sirens following these explosions. So it seemed like no one was coming to figure out what the heck just happened. There's so much to get through, so forgive me if the presentation is a little sloppy. But this is a big conversation about sounds and there are many sounds to discuss. Okay, the news media and the Philadelphia police addressed this by saying that the explosions that everyone was hearing were ATMs being blown up. First of all, Philadelphians reported hearing multiple explosions throughout out the night. Not only Philadelphians, but some people reported hearing them as far away as New Jersey, which we all know I have my opinions about Jersey, but we'll ignore them for this video. This eyebrow is something. They're kind of aggressive today, but you know, so am I. 6 ABC in Philadelphia said in a tweet after this first night that people really started talking about them. Philadelphia police said thieves targeted ATMs across the city overnight. In several instances, officials said the thieves typically rushed into a mini mart or corner store, set off an explosive device, and then made off with the cash from the machine. So I had read that there were about 12 that had been broken into, but not all 12 of those were blown up. And the thing with that is that a lot of Philadelphians were not buying that because they heard far more than 12 explosions, which again, they didn't even blow up all 12 ATMs. This is what they sounded like. I think you can maybe understand why a lot of people in Philadelphia felt like that excuse was bullshit or at least missing the mark, not all that they're hearing. My interest is already peaked at this point. So reading about these hashtags and reading the theories and reading eyewitness accounts and the people saying like, no, it really doesn't seem like it's that. It was between a set time of night. They were so loud. They shook the house. They woke me up, etc., etc., etc. Fell down a rabbit hole and I was first introduced to the LRAD. This is what it looks like. Very intimidating looking, especially on a truck like that. LRAD is a brand that stands for Long Range Acoustic Device. Oh, and I know that we're already a ways into the video, but even though we're obviously gonna be talking about scary things because it's built into the title, I just wanna remind you guys one more time, we're gonna be talking about psychological things. We're gonna be talking about things that are like bodily reactions that you might not be able to help. Sounds really intense, but it is, we'll get into it. And there might be some sounds in this video that genuinely chill you and scare you. So if you don't think that you can mentally handle that right now, I totally feel you. Leave now and I'll see you next week. And I love you, bye. For those of you daring enough to stick with me, here's an ad. Just kidding, unless you got one, in which case I was so serious. Oh, that's an interesting little thing. I kind of like it like that. Whoa. Not my best, but Part of it's because I have hair. I'm telling you, you gotta shave them off or it's less effective. I am proof. I am living proof. Do as I say, not as I do. But also, don't do as I say because you have free will and I'm not your mother. Or do you have free will? That's a whole other video we could talk about in another episode of Glam and Gossip. If you want. Oh, we could talk about the simulation theory. I should get Spencer in for that one. He would hate me for that. You guys don't know, but I brought up the simulation theory in one of our ghost hunting videos at Chateau Marmont. <laughs> I will say deja vu freaks me out. Anyone who's with me on the skeptic thing is about to lose me here. I think it's more likely that whatever simulation we're in <laughs> just bugged out. <laughs> and that's what deja vu probably is. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> so, like, hold on, we've got, we've I'm got coming opinion. back. We've got an opinion right I now. have an opinion. It set Spencer off. <laughs> off. 
That's hilarious to me. We cut out most of it because it just went into a whole thing, but we could talk about it if you want. The theories for, the theories against, the evidence and logic to support, the evidence and logic against. I could do this shit all day. I don't even know why I just put this on there. Does this belong on there? I don't think so, but it does fit, so maybe I'll leave it. Oh, the Red Bull's kicking. Love to see it. We love to see it. Oh, I'm having deja vu. Deja vu freaks me out. I have regrets. I wish that in my last video I had put two rhinestones in my eyebrow and not three. Ooh. Three was a little bit too many. Really? Overzealous? A little overzealous. One, two. Boom. Beautiful. So let me tell you what these things are. LRADs are basically super loud speakers. They can play siren type sounds. They can also basically play any sound you input into it. But they are most commonly used as PA systems, announcement systems, or sirens. These things are so loud that they can and will cause permanent hearing damage if you are too close to them. And they are military and police grade weapons. There are different kinds of LRADs with different strengths. Police may say that they're not using military grade LRADs, but some might argue that's not entirely true. Now, why might police or military need a speaker so loud that it can permanently damage your hearing, you might ask. It's a great question. One of their main purposes essentially is crowd control. They were first used in the G20 summit to disperse crowds. And these have been used in major US cities. The NYPD was being sued by six plaintiffs who said that they were assaulted by an LRAD during a 2014 protest in Manhattan in support of Eric Garner. Sounds familiar, right? Similar situation to today. According to the suit, the plaintiff suffered intense pain, permanent tinnitus, migraines, dizziness, confusion, and vertigo. One plaintiff claimed that he was temporarily blinded from the officer's pepper spray, rendering him helpless to get away from the LRAD. So let's talk about the effects of what sound can do to the body. Loud sounds can obviously rupture your eardrum. They can cause things like headaches and migraines. Certain sounds can cause nausea, anxiety. So naturally, if there's a crowd that police want to disperse, a great idea to get rid of people without having to pepper spray them in the face would just be to play something so uncomfortably loud that it is painful and people instinctively run away to protect themselves. This led me down another rabbit hole. So I started to question, could these explosions in Philadelphia B and LRAD using the sounds of explosions. It is possible that it can play an explosion type sound because you can essentially use any kind of sound in an LRAD speaker. But that begs the question, if it has the capability of using like a siren sound, and that's typically how we've seen it used, why would they choose an explosion type sound over that, if that were even what was going on? This led me to the terrifying world of PSYOPs, which stands for Psychological Operations. PSYOPs specifically are the operations to convey selected information and indicators to audiences to influence their emotions, motives, and objective reasoning, and ultimately the behavior of governments, organizations, groups, and individuals. Individuals. It's basically psychological manipulation using sound. It is not uncommon nor new for sounds to be used as a torture device or a tactic to get your enemy to do what you would like them to do. Let me tell you a little bit about how this has been used in the past because this is where it gets truly chilling. Operation Wandering Soul in Vietnam. The stuff of nightmares. The operation was codenamed Wandering Soul. Engineers spent weeks recording eerie sounds. They were similar to the sounds employed during a scary radio show or movie. They were very creepy and designed to send shivers down the back. These cries and wails were intended to represent souls of the enemy dead who had failed to find the peace of a proper burial. This is something that in the Vietnam culture they knew would get to them psychologically too, which is even more fucked up. The wailing soul cannot be put to rest until this proper burial takes place. The purpose of these sounds was to panic and disrupt the enemy and cause him to flee his position. They literally had speakers on helicopters that flew around and played these eerie sounds that were specifically manufactured to scare Vietnam soldiers and mess with their heads. They knew that they weren't the real sounds of dead soldiers, but when you hear something over and over again and you're in a traumatizing space like a war as it is, obviously that's going to get to people. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is a real thing that Americans have used in war. And this is also decades ago. This is not new. Let me play you a little sample of the sounds from Wandering Soul. Warning, it's super creepy. These are found on things called ghost tapes. <laughs>
goes on for a while and eventually has essentially like a voiceover of someone speaking in what I can assume to be Vietnamese pleading and clearly like suffering and that was extremely disturbing and I feel like if I heard that loud outside that would be so much more scary than sitting right here in this room hearing it over a phone yeah it's disturbing from a tiny little thing but yeah. that reverb that's on it if yeah. that's actually like echoing and I read that they presumably knew that it was from a speaker but that doesn't change that like it drives you crazy oh, yeah. the same way that like dripping water can drive someone crazy True. you know what it's from you know it's not even a bad thing but it can it really I mean think about it this is not the same not comparable I'm just trying to give you an idea of how easy it actually is to be incredibly affected by sound we completely underestimate it the building that I live in decided that they needed to do a three-day fire alarm test where everyone's fire alarm went off sporadically throughout the day for like 15 minutes at a time 30 minutes at a time or an hour at a time and then it would stop for a while and then it would start again off and on for three days and that alone drove me absolutely insane when it's really loud you just can't think you can't get anything else done all i wanted to do was to run out of the house but i needed to be here for certain things and you know half the time it would stop so you think you can go on with your day imagine needing to be at your best because you are like fighting a war for your country. It is life or death. And you have the mental fog and the kind of psychological torture from hearing things like that. Not only is the sound irritating, but culturally what it meant for them is so heavy. It's so interesting because like we could talk about war and get into all of that, but it, it becomes a different discussion when you're talking about war in the traditional sense that we used to think of it as and what it's become today. Because when you start introducing psychological tactics against people, it's like a whole different ballgame. So I believe that these were just on super loud speakers at the time, but now the technology of LRADs is even more intense. They can go up to decibels that I believe are as high as 150 decibels, maybe a bit more, maybe almost up to 160. And anything over 90 consistently can create permanent hearing damage or hearing loss. So we're talking about very, very loud, very, very loud stuff. We're talking like louder than a rock concert, than a jackhammer, than stuff you obviously wouldn't want to be around or up close to without some kind of a protection. So once I started posting about this stuff on Instagram, even though it sounds super conspiracy theory, I felt like it was something that I should cover because I mean, it sounds crazy to think that cops or the National Guard would be using this on its citizens. But then again, we're also watching the police do all kinds of things to its citizens that they should absolutely never be doing. And considering that they've used LRADs in the past for crowd control, specifically in a protest against a murder from a cop to a black man, Eric Garner, it really doesn't seem that crazy to think that they might be using an LRAD again. But no one had seen one yet, no one had confirmed it yet, and Philadelphia police and the National Guard specifically denied the idea that they were using an LRAD in Philadelphia. But on the off chance that there was any chance that they were actually using these against people in Philadelphia, I wanted to make sure that I started to talk about it because I was covering all kinds of things happening with the protests. So some zombies started to DM me things, more to look into, eyewitness sightings, things that they had seen online, and I was directed to this video. This happened in Bryan, Texas. Texas, I reached out to the poster who posted this video and they said to me that the video was filmed two nights prior to the posting and they weren't in Texas, but that they were in Phoenix and they heard the same thing last night. So this was sent to me as a potential LRAD, but this was not like any LRAD sound I had heard in my research so far. This is what it was. I'm sorry in advance. You're not gonna like it. <sighs> So loud. <laughs> what the heck? I think they're letting off something. Something. My first reaction to that was. But also, I immediately wanted to fact check this because that just seems insane. What on earth would make that sound and why? And why have we not heard about this? Like, wh what? I thought this is probably not real until I found videos of the same thing. Here are some of them. And then you get these sounds. Sounds like a bottle rocket, like a decompression or something. 
and then like a warble, it warbles for a while, and then it just goes quiet, and then it just screams blood curling, and it fills the entire sky, and it echoes again, you can hear it in your ears, like feel it in your eardrums. It, Oh, that is just the scariest death scream. What is that sound? I swear I saw like this thing when the lightning was flashing a second ago. What the f Did you hear that? It's like a blood curdling scream, but it's coming from like up here in the sky. That is so loud and so, like, eerie. George Floyd was murdered on May 25th, so this was not a sound being blasted because of protests. There were no protests yet. However, here are some possible explanations for that scream, because I know that a lot of you are freaking out right now. The first possible explanation, I did not get this from a super solid source, but one source said it could have potentially been a natural atmospheric process, primarily lightning, discharging, and thunderstorms, such as those seen in the video. Imagine hearing these banshee screams in real life, no one knows what's going on, and it's thundering and lightning. <laughs> you would probably think the world was ending, and as far as 2020 goes, perhaps it is. As the cloud to ground flashes, it releases a strong current that makes a roaring noise echoing in the sky. That's one theory. Another theory, which is purported to be the true account, this guy named Russi Surrett, who is apparently a meteorologist in the area on a local news channel. What is that noise? We got a lot of calls about this last night. Texas A&M says it was a pressure release valve that went off and released steam at the Global Health Research Complex on campus. Freaky, right? Case closed. Except that I couldn't find any confirmation from any verified Texas A&M source that that is what it is. Now, if you look at the video again, especially that first one, you can actually see a puff of steam or cloud come out every single time you hear the scream. So it seems like it might just be a steam valve. Possible. I've also had people reach out to me though and say that they went to Texas A&M and Texas A&M is actually very good at alerting people on campus with like phone notifications and messages if anything is going on and they will notify based on the littlest thing. And for them to have not apparently notified people of this, especially if it went on for over an hour, is a little out of character. The only person who addressed this is just this meteorologist. Also kind of weird because maybe the meteorologist looked into it because maybe he thought it would be this natural atmospheric phenomenon, which was in the first theory, I don't know. However, none of that explains the person who said that they had just heard it in Phoenix the night before, after the protests had started. But there's yet another theory with this one, and I'm not even doing my makeup anymore, great. I did have someone reach out to me who said that they work in the military. I don't wanna give away too much information because obviously I wanna protect their privacy. From what I could see, it does appear that that is the truth, that they are in the military, but take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt because this is one person's account. They told me that they have tested that scream with an LRAD in the recent past. I feel nuts if we're talking about these things because they sound so conspiracy theory, but I have to keep reminding myself that they've used them to break up Black Lives Matter protests specifically, that they've used them in war, that they're not new, that they can play any form of, like it's just, there's just, it's just. You're not drawing conclusions that are no. false. You're just basing them <laughs> on facts. Yeah, I wanna stress that I'm saying right now, I don't know what's happening. I don't. However, if there's any chance that this is happening, I want you guys to be aware of it. I want you guys to be looking for it, listening for it. The more informed we are, the less likely we are to actually fall for conspiracy theories. The more likely we are to hopefully uncover what's actually going on. Sometimes what's actually going on is the worst possible possibility. Let me read this DM to you that I got. I did not include their initial DM because it did have quite a bit of specific information that I think could compromise their privacy. I asked them if it was the screaming one that they had tested or if this person was talking about a different sound. They said, we tested all sounds. The main one I'm talking about is the screaming. Some of the guys had nightmares after. It's frightening seeing the machine and knowing it comes from that. A few of my guys had worse issues from it than I did. I just got chills and slight nightmares. Some people got super sick. My main thing is that the screaming one is still in testing phase, which means that they raised production so who knows what the effects are. But the thing that bothers me is, logically, this is two days before the murder of George Floyd. So why would the military or police or anyone be using a banshee screaming on an LRAD if there was no civil unrest to break up? And especially in a place like Bryan, Texas. Like, it's, it's a little random. I said, do you have any guess on why they'd be using them in a random place like Bryan, Texas a few days before all the protests even begun? They said, Texas is a great place to test due to the Briggs School being down there, AKA military police. A lot of us are trained in handling 
Kaylin Krause and are told to protect and defend. I said, thanks for reaching out. I asked if I could share what this person had said. And they said, yeah, go ahead. I've kept quiet too long and it bothers me seeing this when I know a little of what's going on. And you just have to be careful of news outlets. Amen to that. This, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our democracy. democracy. Let me do a little more makeup and then I'm gonna tell you why this is even more creepy. It never ends. It legit never ends. 2020 is a nightmare. Yes, this somehow gets worse. Let me tell you why. If presumably you can use any audio file to play through an LRAD, where might military or police get a sound like <sighs> that? Oddly enough, it sounds exactly like an Aztec death whistle. So this is the death whistle. <laughs> The plot does thicken. Let's pretend for a second that this is an LRAD and the military did take this to then use against potential protesters or whatever, or maybe somewhere else. We don't know. The significance, the cultural significance of what the Aztec death whistle was meant for is truly chilling in the context of today. I'm gonna let this man explain it for you. They use when they have a war, when they fight with other tribes, they play over a hundred instruments a hundred dead whistles marching and make a lot of noise to cause a big psychological effects to the enemy. So it's literally used to signal war. So that's great. <laughs> I have seen some unconfirmed reports that people have heard this banshee type scream since the protests. However, I have found no solid confirmation. So keep that in mind. I would like to reiterate again that maybe it really is as simple as that valve blown off steam because the thing that I also still can't explain is that there is clearly a cloud of smoke that comes out every time you hear the noise. Whether or not that is actually an LRAD or just a really scary phenomenon because of steam or lightning or whatever. It could be used in an LRAD and that should be scary enough as it is, especially since there might actually be confirmation from someone in the military that they have tested that scream. But wait, there's more. <sighs> there's always more. I'm telling you, I went down the deepest of rabbit holes. I could open up a rabbit farm. We're talking about the West Bank area of Gaza right now. So totally different time and place. Stories soon started filtering in that the Israeli Defense Force, IDF, was trying out a new weapon on the streets. Quote, the knees buckle, the brain aches, the stomach turns, and suddenly nobody feels like protesting anymore. An associated press photographer at the scene said that even after he covered his ears, he continued to hear the sound ringing in the back of his head. This special vehicle mounted weapon was an LRAD. They're mostly used at sea as a defense against pirates and can fire beams of up to 150 decibel alarm sounds at crowds. But here's where it gets really fun. The victims on the streets knew it by another name. The scream. I feel great now. I feel super confident and great and comfy and fine. Okay, but let's look for more evidence. Is there anything to suggest that LRADs are being used in crowds right now for Black Lives Matter protests? I started to see some shit on Twitter. I saw a post from someone in Portland asking if they had experienced anything today that had caused a few moments of dizziness, vertigo, nausea, roughly between 12.30 and 2 p.m. This was on June 3rd. This was a post from a random account and it got many answers of people essentially confirming exactly what she was asking. A lot of people saying that they felt nauseous, they had to lie down, they got super sick, they felt odd. Two people comparing it to some kind of hangover or being drunk. One saying it was like a hangover nausea without the drink. Legit the worst headache I've had, I almost puked. Started with a ringing, then a weird neurological slash audio phasing from right to left, then a bit of vertigo followed by flushing of the skin. Someone said they heard what sounded like a siren. It was brief, that, but it made them feel very panicked. Remember that, because even though that might sound minor to you, that's going to be very important when we actually get to the scariest sound I've ever heard. So basically a lot of people confirming that LRADs and sound, super loud sound, can cause nauseousness, dizziness, vertigo, headaches, migraines, etc. And those effects can be felt not only from really loud sounds, but even from sounds that technically you can't even hear. It's called infrasound, and we'll get to that in a minute. But first, I just wanna establish, have we even seen any LRAD use in America during the time of these protests? The answer is yes, because what started as a theory, a day or two after I started posting about this, we had confirmation that LRADs were officially spotted in some major cities, one of which was in Portland. The Portland mayor told cops to stop using deafening sound cannons to break up protests. Police in Portland, Oregon deployed a controversial sound cannon to disperse protesters early Friday morning. 
It's called a long range acoustic device or LRAD. It can generate a piercing tone so loud that its potential to cause serious health effects has resulted in a federal lawsuit. That's the NYPD lawsuit I was telling you guys about. In a press conference Friday, Portland Police Bureau Assistant Chief Chris Davis said officers used a long range acoustic device that can quote, emit a tone that is very hard to be around. Sometime after 1.30 a.m. after a police broadcasting vehicle quote, came under attack. If we've learned anything from these protests, it's that the police versions of when they are feeling attacked or afraid for their safety are not the most reliable source of whether or not they actually were attacked. Don't touch him! 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 He's not resisting! He's not So keep that in mind before you come into my comments and you start talking about violent protesters, quote unquote. I don't want to hear it. We could get into that in a whole other video. And that's not this video. But don't do it. What happened here? But that's not all. In Orlando, people got literal pictures of an LRAD on the back of a truck. It appears the police downtown have what we believe to be a sonic weapon used against protesters. We can definitely confirm this is some sort of auditory device. That is a picture of an LRAD 500X, but we'll come back to that in a second. One was also spotted in Los Angeles, where I live. Now, of course, oh. You moved me. Oh shit, sorry. Now, of course, Orlando police put out a statement Regarding the LRAD, law enforcement agencies do utilize a long range acoustic device or LRAD. The equipment is essentially a high end PA system, which is really putting it lightly, but I digress. Used to safely communicate critical instructions across a large crowd of people. Anyone who remains in the curfew area after 8 p.m. may be subject to arrest. We know firsthand it is not always to communicate instructions. Sometimes it is just to disperse crowds using pain and the threat of permanent hearing damage. But I digress. It's different than a bullhorn or conventional loudspeakers. You can say that again. Which disperse sound in all directions. Instead, the LRAD is directional and can deliver clear announcements safely that people can understand by also reducing surrounding background noise. This part is true. The LRAD is directional, which means, and this is a little side note, if you ever find yourself in the direction of an LRAD that is producing some kind of sound at you, whether it is speaking, a siren, a banshee scream, an Aztec death whistle, whatever it may be. This is the LRAD, okay? And it's blasting sound in this direction. You don't want to run away from the LRAD. You want to just get off to the sides of it, like perpendicular to its stream, if that makes sense. Because if you get out of its direction, it will reduce the decibels a lot quicker than running away from it will. I'll talk about other ways to protect yourself against stuff like this at the end, but let me continue. The Orlando Police Department does use this equipment. The equipment rumored on social media, including damage to hearing, involves a military grade version of this equipment, which our agency is not using and does not own. I don't wanna get sued, so I'm just going to say that this is based on my understanding, but in my opinion, that is an outright lie. So for them to say, that they do not own the kind of equipment that can damage hearing, in my opinion, is bullshit. It's a lie. Whether or not they had it turned up to its maximum output, I don't know. But from everything I can tell, they could. So much to talk about. I haven't even gotten to the scariest part yet. People don't even know what they're in for. I'm wondering if it's gonna be really anticlimactic. I think it's huge. terrifying. Y'all gotta watch to the end. Sorry. Why would they wanna use them against protesters? Sure, it could just be used for crowd control, but regardless, they probably shouldn't be using anything for crowd control that could permanently damage your hearing. And even if it wasn't used to damage hearing, going back to PSYOPs, it can be used in a lot of really manipulative ways to get under the skin of the people protesting or the people living in the cities who might not even necessarily be for the protesting. LRADs could be used to stress their opponent. They could be used to cause sleep deprivation to the opponent. If they're using explosion sounds, they could be doing so to make would-be protesters feel too unsafe to go outside. Especially since, like in the case of Philadelphia, people were reporting that they were not hearing any sirens as though anyone was coming to investigate these explosions. And just a side note, I still know that this sounds a little crazy, but keep in mind, it wouldn't be the first time the military's done it, and it wouldn't be the first time that police have done something extremely heinous towards the citizens of its city, especially in a case like Philadelphia. In 1985, the city mayor of Philadelphia. The mayor of Philadelphia and the police dropped a literal bomb on a residential street to target a black community in Philadelphia. What? 
His target was the roof of 6221 Osage Avenue, a row house which at the time had 13 American citizens inside. So their target was one house, but besides the ethical things we can talk about about dropping a bomb on any house, listen to how much worse it gets. They were all members of MOVE, a group which combined the black liberation struggle with back to nature environmentalism. After the bomb struck, a fire took hold and began to spread. The police commissioner critically and fatally decided to quote, let the fire burn. That fire was burning in a row home. Row homes are connected to other row homes. And by the next morning, 61 houses had burnt to the ground. Appropriate. We hear sirens in the background. It left 250 Philadelphians homeless. If they lived, only two of the 13 people in the original house that was bombed got out alive. 11 people were killed, including five children, aged seven to 13. This is a picture of what it looked like. So again, for as crazy as my brain wants to say these things sound, it might not be out of the question. The evidence is mounting that police or military or the president might decide that use of sonic torture or weaponry is the best course of action or something that they should be implementing to break up the civil unrest. However, I don't think that they realize that that would probably only fuel civil unrest because we're fighting police brutality. <laughs> so now here's one of the scariest things to consider, I think. So now we've spotted LRADs, but we we don't have, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we have any video yet of police or military using the LRADs as a siren, as the Aztec death whistle scream. It almost seems like they're there as a possibility and they're not playing any sound. This is where we get to the thing I mentioned earlier, infrasound. Let me teach you about infrasound. Basically, there's two different kinds of things, and they both kind of sound like Nerf super soakers. One is ultrasound, and one is infrasound. Ultrasound means super high frequencies that only like really young people, teenagers and, and younger can hear, that we lose the ability to hear as we age, and infrasound are frequencies so low that the human ear cannot hear them. This is where it gets to the really not fun stuff. I'm pumped because I'm trying to hype myself up for this sound again, but I'm really not looking forward to it either. Infrasonic weapons like the long range acoustic device, LRAD, rely on loud, low frequency sounds. Infrasound. These bulky units have been used for crowd control and repelling pirates. This thing about pirates just cracks pirates. me up. <laughs> it seems like such a sidestep, but you know, I guess if you have a pirate problem, you might want to use this. <laughs> Actually don't. I don't think we're talking about like arg matey kind of pirates like though. When on high power, the effects are like a quote, punch in the guts, ranging from nausea to involuntary excavation of the bowels. <sighs> It's like Taco Bell times a thousand. Ultrasonic, high frequency, bursts have been used as teenager repellent. That sounds like a ska band, teenager repellent. And ultrasound is known to cause headaches and nausea. So super high frequencies can cause nausea and headaches. Super low frequencies can cause nausea, all the awful effects and, you know, maybe violent pooping. Also, whale is used infrasound, so that's like a cute spin on everything going on if you need a little pick-me-up right now. Oh, apparently elephants too. Today I learned, cute. But when the humans use it, it's never for a good reason. Uh, apparently, Barry Manilow has been used to drive teenagers away from shopping malls with acoustic devices. Bruce Springsteen and music from Barney the Dinosaur at very loud volumes used to enemy troops or those mm -hmm. undergoing interrogation. Whoa, that would work for me. It's like, I laugh, but it's also really not funny. It's kind of terrifying. There are two ways that ultrasound can harm humans. It can heat up cells in the body, which cause damage. So I guess you just feel like you're in a fry cooker. And it can cause cavitation. So ultrasound is a thing all on its own. But what I really want to talk about, and the thing that this video is really about, <laughs> eventually, is infrasound. So when I started to look into these kinds of things and talk about these kinds of things on my Instagram stories, I had someone reach out to me who told me to look up a guy named Vic Tandy. And oh, do I somewhat regret that. And now you're all gonna regret it too. If I explain this wrong, please decipher it better in the comments, but I'm gonna try to explain it with what I understand. Everything vibrates at a certain frequency. Everything vibrates, including your body, your organs, everything at a certain frequency. If you have sound that matches that frequency and vibrates at the same, it can make you feel really weird and have some really strange effects on the body. Infrasound, specifically infrasound around 18, 19 Hertz, I believe is similar to the frequency in which your eyeballs vibrate and other parts of your 
face case. Wow, I'm never gonna get this eyeliner done. I just, hold on, let me just focus for a second. Let me focus before I start shaking in my boots. Now, the reason we're talking about this guy, Vic Tandy, is because he essentially discovered what is called the ghost frequency. He was working in a lab on, I think, a life support machine in the 1980s, and he started to feel really weird. He broke into a cold sweat, the hairs on the back of his neck stood up. He felt like he was being watched. Then Vic Tandy saw this like gray figure drift into his vision. He saw a ghost. A ghost. And he started to say that his lab was haunted. This is a true story. And it sounds like it's supernatural, but it's actually fully rooted in science. So just wait, we'll get there. Cause you know me, I'm always trying to disprove ghosts. <laughs> and I think maybe, That is sound torture. This is what Tandy found. He found that a foil blade clamped in a vise was vibrating up and down very fast. He found that the vibrations were caused by a standing sound wave that was bouncing between the ends of the walls of the laboratory and reached a peak of intensity in the center of the room. Basically what he figured out is that because of something that was wrong with a fan in the room, he realized that the frequency of the sound waves caused by this fan was 19 hertz, which means cycles per second. As soon as the fan was turned off, these feelings of eeriness and these visual sensations disappeared. Humans can hear at 20 hertz, but anything below we can't hear. He discovered that any sounds below 20 hertz can cause, as we've been saying over and over again in this video, discomfort, dizziness, blurred vision by literally vibrating your eyeballs, hyperventilation, fear, possibly leading to panic attacks. This is why I said it was important when we saw some people who were first talking about feeling nauseous, dizziness, kind of weird in Portland before LRADs were confirmed, when some people mentioned that they felt instantly panicked. Now, the one thing I will say about those people in Portland before it was confirmed is there is a chance that like in an entire city with millions of people, there are going to be people that experience the same symptoms that are extremely common symptoms for a lot of problems, right? Like nausea, dizziness, sickness, vomiting, like those could be a million different things. We're also in the middle of a pandemic. It's possible that these are just a dozen or a few dozen people that are all feeling the same thing at the same time in a city. That's not completely unheard of. It's not completely unheard of to have confirmation bias that because you're seeing a tweet about it, you're like, oh yeah, come to think of it, I had a bit of a headache and maybe it's nothing to think about. However, it's something that we should think about because this also sounds like things that could be caused by an auditory weapon, which was later confirmed was in the city of Portland. So I wanted to hear what this ghost frequency sounds like. I mean, I believe the science. I believe that that makes sense, but I wanted to see it for myself. So I decided to search for it on YouTube. And let me just say, this scientifically is perhaps the scariest sound you will ever hear because it's not just a mental thing, it's a physical thing. It causes a physical reaction due to frequencies and the vibrations of your body versus sound. So I'm going to stress this again before I play the sound for you. Just remember, it's like a bodily reaction. Your body will most likely react to this sound. It's not even something that you're going to be able to control. So be prepared to feel something. Gonna stress that again. Even if you're not afraid, you might still feel feelings of anxiousness, panic, unease, headache, queasiness. I don't know why anyone would want to put themselves through this, but I did and Anthony did and I think people are just curious. So I won't play it long. This is from another video that I found. I don't know how to make the frequency myself. I, the first time I listened to it, it was on a TV with the volume turned all the way up. When I listened to it later on my phone, it was a lot less effective. So if you want to kind of baby test it out, it might be better just listening to it over a phone or like a quieter device, but I make no promises. And if you do not want to hear it, just skip ahead now, just do it right now. This is your last warning. This is the scariest sound you will ever hear. And technically speaking, you can't even hear it. I'm gonna listen with you. I'm pulling this from a video that technically has sound with it, but the sound you're hearing is not the sound that might cause you to feel a certain way. In a moment, you will hear a frequency which is known to cause paranormal experiences. Can you hear it? <laughs> well, you can't. Did you feel it? I don't know. I felt it. I'm gonna pull up a clip that is just the frequency and nothing else. It's 12 hours of the ghost frequency. <laughs> You might not be close enough. It might not be loud enough. It makes me uncomfortable. Stick your head in there. I feel like I'm uncomfortable because I'm waiting to hear something. You're not going to hear it because it's lower than the ears can hear. I can't tell if I feel it or if it's a placebo effect. Where I'm sure. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I feel like my knees are starting to buckle a little bit, but I'm like <laughs> nervous.
That's totally plausible. I'm gonna stop it. It's done. Hello. This is for the people scrolling through the video now who are looking for it to be over. It's over. <laughs> I cannot tell if that was placebo effect because it did stop right when you stopped it, the weird feeling that I had. I know, I don't know either. You gotta play it randomly tonight and not tell us. I don't know if you felt that. It really depends how much you might have your speakers turned up, what kind of environment you're in, if there's a lot of other noise. I'm not a freaking sound physicist, but I know that when I've heard it, the first time I heard it especially, which was not on my phone, I immediately felt this feeling of like, <sighs> Like my vision had like closed in and I felt the heaviness of anxiety like I would when I have a panic attack. Anthony, the first time he listened to it said that he felt like someone was watching him. And that was before he knew that that was an effect that people typically experience with this sound. Oh, I actually feel nauseous now, but I can't tell if it's placebo effect or not. Yeah, either. Maybe we listen to it for too long. It could be placebo effect because you're anticipating it, but scientifically speaking, it is supported that it will affect you. Like if that's actually the frequency that is being played, which I guess we can't know for sure since you can't hear it to confirm or not. Scientifically, it probably would affect you. I think it's really intense. That video actually, if you watch the whole thing, goes into the science behind it and it's really interesting, but I turned it off immediately the first time I heard it and I didn't go back to it for a couple days because I needed to like cleanse my brain from that feeling. Currently feeling like Red Bull was a terrible idea before playing that. For this video, yeah. I actually kind of felt like it wasn't going to affect me so much since I had listened to it a couple times now. I'm a very evidence, science-based, logic-based person. And the fact that that's not a supernatural phenomenon, like that's a real scientific thing that your body does in reaction to sound is I think just one of the scariest things. Because imagine a device as loud as the LRAD playing infrasound. Imagine a device <laughs> going through a city of people who have all different kinds of predispositions. Think about pregnant women. Think about people who already have anxiety disorders. Think about the elderly, the young, how it can affect people who don't even know it's happening to them, who can't even prove it's happening to them unless they happen to have some insider information. So that's the scary thing. And that's kind of why I wanted to talk about it because even if it seems a little conspiracy theory because we don't have proof of it, the problem is that we're probably never gonna get proof of it. So the best we can do is to try Try to be aware that technically speaking, it could happen. This could be used against us. Police are doing all kinds of things right now that you would think they would never do to their citizens. I said it before and I'll say it again. It couldn't hurt to be overcautious. Don't be paranoid. I don't want to like freak anyone out. Certainly the point is not to cause panic. The point is to actually avoid the panic. But if things get worse, I feel like a lot can happen between now and an election that is going to be very tumultuous. It pays to be cautiously aware and informed. Why are you crying, honey? Actually, I didn't even think about that. I hope that didn't affect you, little mama. I'm sure you can hear it because you've got even better hearing. There you go. What would it do to dogs? <gasps> Here's the other thing about infrasound. It could be used, and it has in some cases been used in music and in films to cause that feeling of anxiety and discomfort. I have a theory, completely unproven. Just gonna stress that real quick. Peter and I watched a movie that I hated, sorry, called <laughs> Under the Silver Lake. Beyond it being painful to watch because it just didn't feel like a good movie, Ripley was freaking out the entire time. Like super on edge, super like buzzy, weird. And we joked that there must be some kind of sound that was in the soundtrack that she could hear that we couldn't that was making her really uncomfortable. I would not be surprised now that I know more about sounds that maybe they did use some kind of ultra or infra sound. Also during the height of some of the protests nearby, the dogs were freaking out. <gasps> oh my God, how did I forget about that? I didn't even post about this. Well, I did on, on Twitter. There's been so much information that we've been taking in in the last three to four weeks that it's just like my brain cannot process it all. Yes, let's see, can I accomplish any more on my face before I start going off on that tangent? Don't really like that helicopter buzzing overhead as I'm about to tell this story. After the thousands of police sirens you just heard. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got eyeliner on my contact. Cool. So I want to say it was a few days or maybe a week or so into these protests. There was a night where I was home alone. And after I was done being Macaulay Culkin, I was still home alone. And I noticed that Creature was freaking the hell out. I had my door to my balcony wide open and I've never seen him act like this before. Normally his demeanor is like completely oblivious, very goofy, like you could drop something on his head and he wouldn't even think about it. He wouldn't know it was falling. And then after it was dropped on his head, he'd be like, Whereas Ripley, if you go anywhere near her with anything, she's like, pshaw, pshaw, pshaw. he's oblivious is what I'm trying to say. Very cute, very lovable. We love him, but a little dumb and a little spacey. I've never seen him go into guard dog mode. I've never really seen him pay attention to anything. It's even hard to get his attention with treats as you've seen. There's a treat out there. 
But this night, all of a sudden, out of absolutely nowhere, there was no other sound playing in my apartment, just the open door. He started to stare out the door like this. And he would go right up to the door frame, but he wouldn't go outside on the balcony, which you know normally he loves to be outside on. He kept sitting by me, like he was protecting me, super alert, and he just seemed very bothered. Probably for a solid 20 minutes or so, he just could not be distracted by anything else. His focus was solely right here. I started to record him because I thought it was so strange that he was acting like that. This is actually before I did a lot of research into infrasound and ultrasound, and I didn't realize yet that LRADs could play those kinds of sounds. This was also before I think any LRADs were confirmed in any major US cities since the protests. This might look normal to you depending on how your dog acts. Like if a dog hears someone outside, this is maybe how they would act. But I went outside on the balcony a couple times when I could get him to go out. There was no one around walking. There was no sounds out of the ordinary. It was so weird. I have not seen him like that since. What are you guys looking at? Another thing to mention, God, this video is gonna be so long and I'm, I'm somewhat sorry, but also not. I find this stuff super interesting and it's actually really useful for us to know. So maybe not my dog theories, but Ripley was less freaked out, but she was a little freaked out and she also is older. He's still a baby. He's like half a year old and she's four. I don't know if that would affect his hearing range the way that like us humans hear different ranges depending on our age. If you're a vet person, tell me in the comments if that's plausible. And what I will say is there were no sirens that I could hear but literally, really, truly, I think in about the halfway point of his odd behavior, a big helicopter that looked like a police helicopter went right over my apartment. And they do have helicopter mounted LRADs. I took a video of it. This is the video of it. Obviously it's way too grainy and dark to tell, but it's interesting, right? If he could hear it from a certain distance away as it got closer, and then it, he's still acting weird as it leaves, and it's all within the radius of what he can hear, I guess technically that could maybe explain his behavior. I mean, that is just a possible explanation, but I do think it was really weird. And I think it's really weird that he hasn't acted like that since. We'll never know. That's the point. You can't hear it. Oh! It's gonna have to stay for now. That helicopter is still flying overhead. It what are they doing? Relaxing. What do they want from me? I think they know what you've been saying. I was gonna say, do you think the NSA is like listening? And now we're getting real freaking conspiracy. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Let me just make that abundantly clear. What if they're looking for me because I'm exposing all their secrets? If I'm dead in a week, just know it was under fishy circumstances, okay? Heck, maybe two weeks. Let's give them some time to find me. Yeah, go investigate. Report back. Hold on, I'm gonna go investigate. It sounds like it's hovering directly overhead, but I can't see it. So a helicopter was directly overhead, just hovering. And now it's hovering slightly not overhead. Super high up, don't know what they're looking at up there. No spotlight. It's interesting. It's certainly eerie timing. <laughs> <laughs> Seems faked. I'm telling you, man, it's a weird world out there right now. People are gonna think I'm nuts. I just wanna know what it thinks it's doing over there. Oh, well that really messes up your blending, so that's great. We'll just have to cover it up with glitter. Not a fan. Katie. Oh, no! Mm, I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. Helicopter is still helicoptin. I mean, how do you avoid this? Honestly. Katie! What'd you do? I did glitter. That's what I did. It's supposed to be an explosion. It's fine. Oh, it certainly exploded. It exploded all over my face. That is what she said. All right, you know what? That doesn't look as cute as the girl who Katie sent me. My glitter doesn't go with the colors I did. I did like a warm eyeshadow and hers is like a warm copper gold. And I picked like a yellow gold, which is kind of gross, but yeah, what can you do? I almost forgot my lashes. What is wrong with me? That sound got to my brain and made me forget lashes. 
So as of late, there have been a lot of increasing reports about excessive fireworks. So I'm gonna wrap up this video with probably another 10 minutes of me talking about fireworks as potential crowd control and a mental wearing down of momentum for this movement. Last night on Twitter, it seemed like everybody was suddenly talking about the excessive fireworks that they're hearing in their neighborhoods and how unusual they are. It's close to the 4th of July, yes, but the 4th of July is still almost a full two weeks away and this has been going on for weeks. We always hear more fireworks in this country leading up to the 4th of July because if you're not from America, you might not know, but we celebrate the 4th of July with firework shows all over the country. So it's not atypical to hear these, but it is atypical with the level of fireworks, the persistence, consistency, the timing of them, and the prevalence of them. Even Seth Rogen and Dane Cook were tweeting about the fireworks. Can anyone explain why we're getting Macy's 4th of July level fireworks every night in New York City for the past three weeks now? Asking for a friend. It's been nonstop from 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. in all five boroughs. And this is from New York City to Los Angeles. So I'm at Lucy's on Pico and La Brea, that's in Los Angeles, and it sounds like a war zone over here. Non-stop explosion. Reporting from Brooklyn, there was yet another night of extremely loud fireworks starting at 8 p.m. and ending at about 2 a.m. This is the second week straight of this. Every night during the same time period, like clockwork. Here's a video from Boston. Every night, right in the middle of the densely populated neighborhoods, people are saying that they're noticing the consistency in the timing and the quality. Some people are explaining it away as a lot of 4th of July things things are canceled this year because of the pandemic. So fireworks suppliers are trying to sell their stock at a discounted rate. That's why they're in the hands of a lot of civilians when they wouldn't normally be. I read one article that was incredibly funny, even though it wasn't trying to be. The article says, can't see a movie or dine out. Why not explode some things? <laughs> That's the first thing I think of when I can't go see a movie. Several industry side representatives offered similar explanations to me. Keep that in mind, industry side representatives. They said it's possible that the pandemic is causing supply side dynamics that are contributing in their own way to increase in sales and usage. This says 75% of annual revenue from fireworks producers and manufacturers get their revenue from 4th of July shows. So one theory is that they're pivoting to retail sales to mitigate losses. But consumers are not supposed to be able to buy professional grade fireworks. And these are certainly very high quality, gigantic fireworks, or so it seems. Also listen to how they're being fired off. I found a really incredible thread about this on Twitter. Twitter has a lot of people doing research. Someone put together a tracking sheet of the fireworks happening all over the country in excess. Everywhere from Albany, New York to West Hills, California, there's 62 cities on the list with the date the fireworks started and the windows in which they start each night. In Baltimore, Maryland, they're starting around 10 p.m. and they're going until about 4 a.m. Philly, it says they started on 527, although remember early reports didn't actually mention fireworks. In Philly, they're going from a window of 6 p.m. to 4 a.m. They also list the first protest, if the protest is ongoing, if the fireworks are ongoing, if there's been a crackdown, the date of the crackdowns. There's a lot of information on this that I'll link in the description below if you'd like to see it. And then, again, this is an eyewitness account, Take that with a grain of salt. But then you start seeing some people posting things like, my husband saw a black SUV selling loads of big fireworks for cheap. There were people lined up to buy them. I'm from LA. My friend who lives in East LA said the kids on the block, quote, found thousands of fireworks in a local park. Kids who have been cooped up for quarantine, bored, have been shooting them off all night. When I saw this thread, I texted an old friend I know who was a vet to ask. He confirmed the purpose is for the military to get called in against members of the local populace by the residents themselves. They are able to quote, apprehend or murder the quote suspects with support from the exhausted, sleep deprived populace. So some people are thinking that this is a way for citizens to be turned against other citizens, to separate people who are pro protest versus over it, sick of it, wants it to stop. So some people believe that they are feeding these high quality fireworks that they normally couldn't get a hold of to communities that would be willing to set them off that might just be bored, that would want to use them as a way to not only do all the things that we talked about, like the psychological things to make people sleep deprived, to stress them out, but also to turn people against one another and to legitimize the need for more funding for the police to go against the theory that we should defund the police. It could legitimize a crackdown in certain cities. A lot of people are starting to talk about the fireworks now. You actually just showed me while we were filming this a time lapse of the fireworks going off in Oakland. 
Yeah, there are a bunch going on. It does seem excessive. And it's totally plausible that maybe people are just blowing off more steam because we are still in a pandemic and there's no events and it's possible. But I think based on everything we've seen <laughs> and everything we've talked about in this video, it's also very possible that maybe it's a little less innocent than that. Someone said, and this again is just one person's account. I'm not saying it's true or not, but one person said, the actual cops are doing the fireworks in Harlem. It's two different groups. They got caught the other day in the neighborhood I'm in and they haven't been back since. I've lived in Harlem for 25 years. This is the first fireworks that have gone past midnight. If the cops are setting these off, you have to wonder why they would be doing that. But a lot of people are also saying that it's locals. It's just, it, it, there's a lot going on. And the point, like I said in the beginning of this video is to do your own research because I am but one woman and I will not find all of the things that are out there to read on this. It's just impossible. There are so many people that are reporting on this that are posting videos and that's a great thing that we have access to these kinds of things during a time like this. But it can be easy to misinterpret things. Like I said, I don't fully know what's going on but I do know that we should be alert. And this might change drastically by the time this video is up because I'm filming this on Monday and it's gonna take some time to edit. If I have any updates for you that are really important, I will put them right here, right now. I just thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye. Wouldn't that be crazy if I just started seeing ghosts now? It's the sound. It's the man. sound. It's the sounds. But yeah, that is some of the scariest shit I've ever heard in more ways than one. Please leave anything down in the comments if you find more information, if you can find corrected information. I tried my best to make sure that everything was either supported by a solid source or I disclaimed that it is maybe not the best source, but the point is to try to figure out what is going on and the point is always to try to learn as accurately as we possibly can given what we have to work off of. So like I said, I would love for this to be more of a conversation and not a one-sided kind of discourse. Thanks for gossiping with me. Remember to check the links in the description below to see how you can get involved and how you can help. If you see any kind of police brutality, record it if you feel safe to, because the best weapon that we have right now is information. The truth is on our side. And the only way things are going to change is if we are relentless, persistent, consistent, and we're not deterred by all of the things that are being put against us to be silent and to stop. So the more evidence we have of what is truly going on, the more effective we can be at trying to create real change. There's a lot of ways to create change and I don't want to make it seem like that's even the only thing you can do There's so many ways to help But I hope that if anyone's not already a part of this conversation you seriously consider learning more about it We have to keep fighting for equality equal opportunity being treated like human beings but oh and a quick side note i highly recommend checking out this video it'll be linked in the description down below it's more information on how sound works how lrads work different frequencies and how you can protect yourself i do recommend that you watch the whole thing but the long and short of it is that holding up a poster in front of you might be one of your best protections against an lrad if you find yourself directly in its stream and you're having a hard time getting out of its path it seems it significantly cuts down the pain that LRADs can induce. So yeah, a poster board, who would have thought? That's very convenient actually, because now you have another excuse to write what you really wanna say on a poster to hold in front of cops right now. So if anyone's gotten this far in the video and is still ready to give me shit about what side I'm on here, I'm just gonna plainly say it. If you're not on the side against racism, bye. <laughs> and I don't feel bad about it. And if you'd like to see more glam and gossip where I talk about things that are interesting to me or that I'm learning about, they can be spooky, they can be not. If you have a better name suggestion for the series, let me know, because I like to read and talk about things. I mean, we can just, we can just rename the definition of gossip if there's no better word. Gossip can just mean to chit chat. There you go, I'm renaming it. See you guys next week, I love you, stay safe.